Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is the appointed hour of 6.30. Uh, welcome all to our work session for the uh, second quarter financial report um, provided by Jen. I'll call on Jim to uh, introduce the topic and move right along. Good evening. So I did not bring printouts today anticipating you would have your surfaces, but I see Mr. Oligage, you do not. Um, would you like to share mine? Oh, you have it printed out. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> nope. We're not running two sets of books. <laughs> Good I promise. News. Good news. <laughs> Okay, so beginning with the general fund revenues, um, I'd like to comment that overall at this halfway point, I'm not seeing any red flags that would make me think we won't be able to make our budgeted revenues. The, um, the two largest contributors are our property taxes and other local taxes, and these categories are performing at 54% and 50% of budget respectively. Within other local taxes, we have a couple of other things going on that leads me to believe we're even um, doing better than the 50% that's showing. And the first is that included in this category is the business license tax category. And those taxes are not due until March 1st. So we'll see a big uptick this month and early next month. The local sales tax we know has a two month lag time. So in this report you're looking at, we don't yet have the revenue that was earned in December. So that will, in addition, bump us up. And lastly, we also have the un or unbudgeted revenue line for the cigarette tax. And as of today, when I checked, we had already collected $29,000. And we've only been doing it since January 1. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Permits and licenses, use of money and property, and recovered costs, you'll see, are all lagging behind budget. They're at 19, 14, and 1%, respectively. However, I don't feel we need to be super concerned about this because they also make up very small percentages of our overall revenue budget. For example, permits and licenses only accounts for 0.35% of the budget. And the use of property and money we, we knew this was going to be low um, because of the interest rates. There's some rumors that those will start to go up in the coming months, so we may be able to recover some ground. And in addition, the city treasurer and I have started looking into other permitted investments where we could possibly put some of the city's cash. And we hope to have a recommendation to bring to council in the coming months, but it will definitely be after budget. Um, and then this category, it's only 1.3% of the general fund's revenue. Recorded, or I'm sorry, recovered costs, we mainly receive at year end. This is the category that includes the fire and rescue and joint services payments. Um, and then likewise, this only represents 4.4% of our revenue. But we expect you to meet that. Any questions? Uh, Jen, <clears throat> uh, Regarding um, use of money, what did we budget for um, an interest rate on our, mm. do you recall? If you I don't, don't, it's fine. Okay. Sorry. I'll look it up, though, and let everyone know. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a dance we do every year trying to figure out you know, what, which direction interest rates are going to go. And um, when they came crashing down with the pandemic, um, uh, I, I guess at some point it may be helpful as well. Um, to, to get a detail of, and I'm making up numbers if we have, um, our general fund is um, uh, you know, $12 million. Where are those dollars and what are they earning? Do we have CDs, uh, local investment pool, et cetera? Perfect. And part and parcel with the recommendation that you'll be bringing forward. Right, right. And just to answer that quickly, right now, um, the vast majority of our cash is sitting in LGIP. Okay. And then we had some CDs that matured and we've not yet renewed them. Um, we're looking at that as part of the whole process of seeing the best place to recommend. Terrific. 
Anything else on revenues before I head to expenses? The cigarette tax. Yes. The uh, I was just trying to recall and I was having trouble. Getting the day older every day. What what our tax rate was? Was it like twenty five cents, cents a pack? A pack exactly. Yeah, okay. Okay. So. <clears throat> See, not so bad memory there. If you would like to diverge a minute, I did put it in my report to you this evening. And yes, it's 25 cents. Yes, we've sold about $29,000 worth of stamps. Uh, we have five vendors in the community, Kroger, Sheets, uh, Dollar General, Dollar General, General Stop In, and believe it or not, Washington Street purveyors actually sell a few packs of cigarettes. The cigarette stamps are sold in rolls of 15,000. Kroger ordered two. Sheets ordered two. Uh, stop and go or stop in has a one roll. And then uh, I can remember the other one. Dollar General. Dollar General. I don't, I don't know why. I want to say Food Line. Um, also got one roll. They're $33,750 roll. I was talking with Karen about that earlier in the week, and we said, gosh, you know, revenues may be a little less than we think because, you know, how many of those places are really going to sell 15,000 packs of cigarettes in the next couple of months? The next day, Stop In came in and bought 15,000 more. Now, Karen asked why, and they said because we needed them. Now, I don't know if they need them in the next two months or if that's the full year's worth of stamps, but it's sort of unpredictable, as we'd said when we, uh, you know, approved this tax, what were the revenues? As uh, Jennifer said, they're not budgeted. We'll wait till the end of the six month period. We'll have a better idea of what it'll be. And of course, that'll be in the budget. But uh, that's where we are today. Nothing negative. Uh, Karen said everything went very smoothly with our local vendors. There were no complaints, no problems. And I, you know, she and her staff did a great job getting this up and running January 1. So it's, you know, no concerns. And we see what we see revenue wise. The general fund expenses for the halfway point are um, running a little bit ahead of expectations at 55%. As you can see in the chart, the, um, the biggest contributor to this is the non-departmental expenses, which is running at 70% of budget. But I'd like to point out that within this category, we have um, three one-time expenses that were paid in full early on in the year that we won't see repeated. And those are just as a refresher, the 500,000 from the FY21 carryover, we moved to the CIP. The 800,000, we moved to the equipment replacement fund. And then we had also budgeted to send 525,000 to the utility fund. And, um, and what that was is that was the savings on the bond refinancing that we did last year. Um, it was previously agreed that that money would go to the utility fund to be used in I and I reduction projects. Public safety is the other large expense in our budget, and they're coming in at 44% for the year. Public Works State Street is currently running at 62% of the budget, according to this report. But we still have $332,000 of unappropriated um, FY21 carryover. And I plan to, at the next city council meeting, come before you with an appropriation and budget amendment request that will have that allocated. And so once that's factored into the budget, they're actually only running at 40, uh, was it 40, yeah, 45% through year end. Any questions on the expenses? Got one. Yes, sir. Fire truck. Yes. It has been ordered. Um, the purchase order was signed. The final price was just over $1.7 million. And we expect to receive it in September. And the 800000 transfer was to... To the fire truck. Cover for the part fire of truck. that fire truck. Exactly. It yes. Not. And one of the other points in our discussion was what interest rate was our going to be finance charge for that. And at some point we were talking about a low number. What number did we end up with or is it financed yet? So we've not yet financed, but I did reach out to VML VACO this week. Um, and I, I had a follow-up conversation this morning. So I should see some analyses from them on what we might be able to expect come September when we need the cash. 
what kind of what kind of numbers are they floating uh, for? He didn't want to tell me on the phone. He wanted to think about it. I see. I see. <laughs> oh. There's a carrot. <laughs> uh, given um, state of the economy, um, if you can figure out what the interest rates are going to be in September, you can uh, mint money if you can determine that. But they they will be what they will be. Right. Well, that's, that's those futures contracts. Isn't it? Exactly. Any other questions on the general fund expenses? Jennifer, just uh, looking at the, the public safety um, uh, firm for me, that's, we, we did um, raise the um, salaries of our uh, police department. We did. And that's reflected in here. It is. And absorbed. It is. Yeah, they're, they're working really hard to control the costs to make sure that you know, we don't have any issues. It balances out. Very good. Thank you. I will note one other thing that is important, and it sort of dovetails with the fire ladder truck, is that we've ordered uh, two cruisers in the police department and two SUVs in the fire department. They're probably going to be delivered also next September, it's as soon as we can get them. We ordered them months ago. So they, that won't be expended. It isn't expended now. It probably won't be expended this year. We'll probably have to carry that over undoubtedly until next year. The other thing that's important... Ne next fiscal year. Next fiscal year. Yeah. Yes, sir. What is important is we are looking at what needs to be in the budget for the next fiscal year, July 1. And based on our early look, I've gone ahead and authorized the police chief to order vehicles. Otherwise, we won't see them in 2020, until 2024, <laughs> likely now. You've got to get in line right now to get something 12 or 14 months out. We can order those if we don't budget those. Uh, any for any reason, we can back away from it, and somebody else will gladly fill the spot for those vehicles. But I've, I've done that. It doesn't cost us anything. I just don't want to see us waiting and ordering in July or August, and we won't see it again until, you know, I say 24, but sometime the fall of 23. <laughs> so. well, I noticed in the document that the cost of the cruisers, the two of them, was written as $55,000 each. Each. Yes, sir. In there. And, you know, we, we got nice police cars, I guess, is what we would say, and whatnot. So um, I'm just kind of taken a little bit by a $55,000 car uh, for the police department times two, and then times it by however many cars we have. You know, we're, we're, we're running a, a pretty heavy uh, and, operation in terms of the cost of our vehicles. And, you know, it was really educational, I think, back during the budget cycle when I asked a similar question, because I go back over previous years and look what police cars have been budgeted for back in my seven years on council. And it was explained to me that in previous years, when the line item might have said that it was 39000 or $42,000 or $43,000 for a new cruiser, we would buy the cruiser, and then we would incur a fourteen dollars or $15,000 expense mm -hmm. to outfit it right. as a police car, you know, with the equipment. And so now it's more realistic to budget for it all in. What it will cost to be delivered mm -hmm. is $55,000, where in the past we would on paper say forty, dollars and then we'd add, add fifteen dollars to it later. And, and my numbers are not exact. But that was explained last year in the, during the budget process to me, and that was educational to say, all right, this is the all-in number. There's no other additional or hidden costs, if you will. Yes, um, I, was, I was wondering about that, about the uh, equipment that transfers from one police car to another. And I guess the question that I have is, does the equipment transfer from an existing police car to a new police car? Surely, very, very radio, little, very little radio. of it. Very little of it. Very little. Very little of it. Yes, I think in the CIP, didn't we see Jennifer that there's already a thirteen or fourteen thousand dollar expenditure in like, the CIP for the accessories for the accessories of those two vehicles. We've been able to get the accessories, but we can't get the vehicles. <laughs> so that's you know to date. So some clearly will, but majority does not. You have a police car with equipment six or seven years old. You don't want to try and hold that for another six or seven years. <clears throat> you know, it, the, the, it's improved. The tech, you know, the technology is improved. You've got to have the, yeah. They either won't maintain it because they've got improved technology or you don't want to rely on it 
for another six years. So you go ahead and buy the new stuff generally. So do we buy service contracts for uh, those police cars, the equipment in the police cars? You know, I don't believe we do, but I do not know that. That, that was an honest. issue mm -hmm. over at the emergency centers, had them uh, uh, having a service contract for the vendors to be able to maintain and for the, the radio systems, yes. And our radios are actually covered under that uh, overarching agreement with the 911 center. All the local radios for law enforcement are covered there, and most of them for the fire department as well. Right. So they're maintained. The radio system as a whole for our locality is maintained and serviced through the 911 center. Good, good questions, but probably with given the time, yeah. material to get through. We're going to run out of time. Dennis, go right ahead. Yeah, just a, a quick question. I, I'm a little confused by under the leisure services, um, uh, the, the, I guess the unbudgeted expenditure for the pool for 15510 I'm just trying to understand what that is. Is that the operation of the pool last summer? It is. It was the shortfall between their operating revenue and what it actually cost them to run it. Well, I, I guess what I'm, I'm asking is we had pre in previous years, we had budgeted for the outdoor pool. Did we not budget this past year for the, I mean, we budgeted $36,000 to run the outdoor pool. Did we just mm -hmm. not budget it because of COVID thinking that it would be closed or? I don't know. Okay. I'll try to find out though. Okay, because as but this year, assuming it's going to be open, mm -hmm. we would budget for the pool being open. Okay, that's my understanding. Okay. Yes, and then just also to fully answer your question, the other unbudget, unbudgeted expense in there was the purchase of several, um, I think, twenty-one uh, lounge chairs for the pool. Got it. And most of that was related to COVID, obviously. You know, the, both the. Um, Friends of Rockbridge Swimming and others said we need more social distancing. We need more places for people to sit, and and they had to have more lifeguards. You know, so lifeguards like every other. Unfortunately, talking with uh, the director of Fours, um, lifeguards like almost any other job today are not to be had. So they have to pay more, and, and this is actually beneficial that they will go ahead and provide both the coverage for the indoor and outdoor pool because then they have a better compensation for the lifeguards. It's more attractive if you can give them more hours. So moving on to the school fund, the revenues and expenses are both running at 48 and 47% of budget respectively. You'll notice that um, the operation and maintenance line and the technology expense lines are running ahead of budget. Under the operations and maintenance, many of the expenses in that category are paid just once per year at the beginning of the fiscal year. So we won't see additional, um, too many additional expenses throughout the rest of the year. And in the technology expenses, a lot of what's encompassed in there are grant funds that are spent first and then the schools ask for reimbursement. You'll also notice that cafeteria expenses are running ahead of budget. This is partially a result of the increased food costs that we're all seeing, but also the schools are receiving additional funds so that each child can receive a free breakfast and lunch. And so they're just seeing more children eating at school than they had initially anticipated. Recently, the school board learned that they are going to need to hire three long-term subs in the spring um, to cover for maternity leave. And so this is going to be an unbudgeted cost to watch, and that will show up in the admin attendance and health line. Any questions on the school? Any idea how far out of budget that will be? Or, I mean, or do they anticipate compensating from other areas? Or I will follow up and find out the answer to that. OK, thank you. Sure. So moving on to the utility fund, overall, the utility fund revenues are running at 55% of budget. And you'll notice the numbers on my chart are different than those that you see in the system generated reports later on in this package. And the reason for that is the July receipts were accrued back to FY21 because that was essentially for service provided in June. And 
On the flip side, the January receipts were accrued back to December in my chart so that I could show you a full six month picture. So looking at only the reports um, without any explanation, you'll see that expenses are running at just 27% of budget. However, this is because of the, um, the Diamond Hill project, which you'll find in the capital projects line. That's budgeted at 5.8 million. And they did get a bit of a later start than anticipated. So the last report I've had from Jeff Martone, he believes that the project will actually be completed in October of 22. So we'll see some carryover. Uh, we won't spend all of the funds this year. We'll carry them forward to FY23. Also in the expenses, you'll see that water operations are running a bit high at 56% of budget. So while collections for water and wastewater services were also higher, um, Public Works noticed in the months of October and November that the city's non-revenue water was also up. So they don't have the December numbers ready yet, and once they do, we can look into that further. Questions on the utility fund? I got lost there in the last bit. The um, non-revenue water? Yeah. Yes. So what that is, it's money that... Or, water that we buy from the MSA and it doesn't end up going through a customer's meter. So it can be from leaks or water main breaks or just like flushing out fire hydrants, something like that. Gotcha. Jeff did note to me that of course we've had a significant amount of water breaks in the last two to three months. Mm -hmm. And we also have tried to pin down a couple of large customers who water goes in to the system, we can tell by the meters that we uh, use to regulate that, but it doesn't show up in any of their meters where there's a usage, and so they don't pay for it, i.e. WNL. <laughs> it goes through the master meters, and we know how much money they receive, but it doesn't show up anywhere in any of their meters on campus. Hmm. So we're, we've been working on that for six months to nine months and can't figure out where it is. So related to that, what's our non-revenue water usage, the ratio of non-water to what we're actually billing out? Like how much, what percentage are we losing? I want to say the most recent number I've seen, it's close to 40%. It jumps up dramatically in the, and I think Jen noticed that, in the September, October, November timeframe, which correlates to the boilers going on at WNL but we can't find what's happening. It, did you say 40%? 40%. Loss. Loss. So I, I know when, when Mike Kennedy was here with, with Public Works, we were running 30 and that was freaking him out. Mm -hmm. um, so hearing up to 40 really kind of gets my antenna up. I, yeah. I'll, I'll get that number, but it's high. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm <clears throat> trying to piece it all together. Non-revenue water is making up 40% of our operations. 40% of the water we buy, we don't sell through a meter. It goes somewhere. It goes somewhere. We buy it. It comes to us. Sure. And well, it's not goes through, it doesn't go through a customer's meter. Through a meter that we're using to charge a customer. It's going through a w &L master meter, but it's until their master meter is live, mm -hmm. if you will, it's being lost on their private property until it gets to one of their, yeah. their buildings. And, and let me say that <clears throat> that 40% does not go to w &L. It's not all w right. but a lot no. of it might it, be. By no means. Right, no understood. Means. Please, let's not, let's not say that. Good okay. clarification, yeah. but some water. Some portion. Some portion is going mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So we're not billing w &L's water through the master meter. We're right, billing we are it. not. Well, I, I mean, at what point do we do that? I, I mean, I guess my question is, are, are they... You know, I, so when I came here, we had put an agreement, draft agreement in place, and we would replace infrastructure so that they would accept the master meters. We never budgeted the replacement of that infrastructure, so the agreements are void. Jeff, Jeff is working on that now. There were water mains that they said, we will, if you replace these water mains, we will sign this agreement. 
we never budgeted at that time those water main replacements. I think the agreement was good for two years and it's void now. So the infrastructure to, that we would be replacing, is that on Washington and Lee grounds or is that elsewhere? Yes. It it's, is. It's their side of the master meter. So they don't want it, they didn't want to accept old pipes or problematic pipes on their side unless we repaired them first. And we agreed to that. It just didn't get done. And a master meter cost <clears throat> like a million dollars? Oh, no. I, I, I don't believe so. I'll okay. check that for you, but I don't okay. believe it's anywhere near that much okay. money. We're, we're bumping up on 7 o'clock, and um, I'd say if you can plow on okay. through the remainder. I'll go very quick. Yes. All right, so the equipment replacement fund, we, we did already touch on that a bit. Um, one thing I would like to mention is that at the next meeting when I bring the budget amendment and appropriations request. I'm also going to be asking for appropriations in this fund. In FY21, the general fund made all of the contributions that it had budgeted to the equipment replacement fund, but not all of the equipment was ordered. It was decided some of that would be ordered in FY22. So I'm going to be bringing forward the request to put that appropriation in. Is that detailed in here, or that's just conceptually? Conceptually, I, uh, I'm still working on pulling all the numbers together. Fair enough. Very good. Any questions on the equipment replacement? Uh, always reminded when we go through this and uh, issues with infrastructure, um, it takes a lot to run a city. Um, it, uh, police cars and fire trucks and uh, water and sewer pipes. So. If there are no other questions, anything else to present? I had one other thing. Sure. Um, I, I can do this quickly. So maybe I can just ask you to pass on. So I just wanted to quickly touch on the, um, the local sales tax, the meals tax, and the lodging tax, and the fact that we are quite a bit ahead of budget. So what I've put together here is showing you what our collections have been, actual collections for FY22, and the excess each month. And then I further um, projected out, what if we only collect the budgeted amount now through year end? What will that look like for us? And that looks like um, about $450,000 of excess revenue. And then that will, of course, mean extra payments to the horse center and to tourism. But accounting for that, we're still looking at approximately $363,000 in excess revenue for FY22. And that's being very conservative because we're only estimating budget for the, re for the next six months, which we're going to surpass that. But it's just to assure you that we are doing very well and frankly, when we come up with budget amendments, either in the next meeting or perhaps in the third quarter, revenues are there to take care of things that may be needed. I don't have any plans for that right now, but I want you to see that, that we're doing well. If we don't need to spend it, then we put it into our surplus for the, and go into the general fund surplus or capital items or equipment replacement as we've done in the future or in the past. And one last update I would like to make, um, just a reminder really, because I am going to be coming and asking for appropriations in two weeks. We still have $242,000 that has not yet been appropriated from the excess revenue from FY21. So, and that's in addition, of course, to this $363,000 and anything we're receiving from the cigarette taxes. And that I would submit to you is good news but uh, certainly make some time <clears throat> for council to uh, hash out the best way to um, apply those excess revenues for the best improvements for our community. Jen, thank you. Um, it is very close to seven o'clock. The members of council need a, a break or happy to plow on through? We'll keep plowing. We'll